Hey friends, I hope your week is off to a great start. Today I'm going to be trying out Claire Saffitz's recipe for bittersweet chocolate souffles. I do a fair amount of baking for this channel and just in my regular life, but I've never tried souffle before because I'm terrified to make them. For some reason I've got it in my head that they're really difficult and that they typically don't turn out correctly. So with Valentine's Day approaching I figured now would be the perfect time to try out this recipe, that way I can let you know some tips and tricks to get a good result. I do these videos every single Wednesday, if you like this one please be sure to give me a big thumbs up and click subscribe. Without any further ado, let's get into it. The first thing we're going to need to do is prep our ramekins. So I've got four seven ounce ramekins here and a generous amount of butter. The BA recipe gives several tips to ensure that you're going to set your souffles up to rise. The first is to brush in upward strokes around the perimeter of the ramekin. Supposedly this signals to the souffle that it should expand upward. So that's what I'm doing here. One thing I am curious about is whether this brushing is just like an old wives tale or if there's actually something to it. So I am going to do one of these just rubbing butter around the inside with my fingers. So this way we'll kind of isolate that variable to see does brushing actually matter or does it not? And that way if you don't have a pastry brush maybe you don't need to invest in one. To keep this one separate I'm going to set it on a little square parchment over here. Now the next thing we need to do is line the inside of these with sugar. I'm going to sprinkle a generous amount of just granulated sugar in here. I'm going to kind of swirl it around the bottom and then roll it around the side. I'm trying to roll it just so that any excess pours into the next ramekin and I can just keep on moving without having a bunch of waste. So we've got our ramekins all prepped. We can set these aside until we need them. So next we're going to melt down some chocolate because we need to let this cool off just a bit. Here I've got some really high quality dark chocolate. To that I'm going to add one tablespoon of butter and two tablespoons of brewed coffee. And I'm using the steeped brand coffee from my Chamberlain coffee video if you haven't checked that out. When it comes to melting this down you can do it over a double boiler or you can do it in the microwave on very low power just stopping every 30 seconds to stir. When my chocolate is almost fully melted I start to stir it every 20 seconds. You just want to keep a really close eye on it. Scorching your chocolate would be a deal breaker here. You'd have to start over completely. So my chocolate is fully melted and in the microwave this took about two and a half minutes on half power. I'm going to let this cool down just a bit before moving on to the next step. So to the slightly cooled chocolate mixture we need to add in three egg yolks and I've got my eggs here at room temperature and since we need whites for the other component of this recipe I'm just doing this all at the same time. Since this recipe requires five whites but only three yolks I'm just going to go ahead and store my extra yolks in the freezer that way if I need them for a lemon curd or some other recipe I'll have them available. So we don't need the whites just yet so I'm going to set these aside and now we can add in the vanilla extract to our chocolate mixture. And we're going to whisk this together. And the recipe notes that this is going to turn kind of grainy, which I would definitely agree with that assessment. This is looking very messy. And so now I've got two teaspoons of just water and this should turn it into a glossy chocolate mixture again. So I wouldn't really say that this looks glossy. I mean the water is definitely incorporated here, but it's not uh, back to the flowing mixture it was before. All right, so this is a fun situation. The original chocolate mixture that I made completely seized and you can see there is a lot of kind of fat separating out from this grainy chocolate mess. So this was using the 74% cocoa. The recipe recommended using 70%. I figure 74 is pretty close. However, if you have too much fat in the mixture, this kind of seizing can happen. So I remelted some chocolate, this time using the 66% cocoa, still from Guitard, because since there are only a couple ingredients, you want really, you know, the best quality available. So this is melted, it's glossy, it's cooled down slightly, and now we're ready to move on to the vanilla and egg situation again. So let's try it again. Again. And we'll get this all whisked together. So the texture here is already different than what I was experiencing with the darker chocolate. It's still getting that kind of grainy appearance though. All right now I've got the two teaspoons of water. Ooh, this is definitely different than what happened last time. All right great so this I think is what we're wanting. It is smooth, it is glossy, it looks delicious. Compare that versus this clumpy mess. I mean it's night and day different. Word to the wise, do not cross the 70% cocoa threshold or you're going to have a mess on your hands. I definitely would recommend this 66%. This worked out perfectly. So now in the bowl of my stand mixer fitted with the whisk attachment, we're going to go ahead and beat the five room temperature egg whites. If you don't have a stand mixer, you could use a hand mixer or even just a whisk and do this manually. So we're going to beat this over medium speed for about 30 seconds just to break up those egg whites and have a little bit of foam start to form. All right, so this is looking a little bit frothy. Now I'm gonna add in my kosher salt and we're gonna turn the speed up to medium high. 
So we're going to beat this until a soft peak forms that should take about two minutes. All right, and that's been exactly two minutes and we are at a soft peak. So you can see that this is kind of holding its shape a little bit, but it does want to flop over right away. So this is the soft peak stage. So now we've got enough structure in the egg to where we can add the granulated sugar without it all falling apart. So we're going to pop this mixer back on. So now continuing to mix over medium high speed, we're going to gradually stream in our granulated sugar. And you want to pour this granulated sugar in slowly enough that you can actually see the individual granules of sugar. If you go too quickly, you're going to knock the air out of the mixture. And then we're going to continue to beat this until we have a firm peak. So that's been about a minute. You don't want to overbeat here. So we're not quite there yet. This peak is tipping over. So this would be like a medium peak. We need to go a little longer. All right. So that was another 20 seconds. Perfect. And we are there. So that is a stiff peak. It's still wobbly. It's still nice and glossy. If you mix this for too long, it's going to look dry and kind of matte. And that'll mean that you need to start over. So don't over mix your egg whites. All right, cool. So we've got our two recipes prepared. We've got our rich chocolate mixture and the egg whites. Now we just need to combine them. So I'm going to take one third of this mixture and add it into the chocolate. We want to keep this as aerated as possible. However, whenever you take something thick and heavy like this chocolate mixture and add whites to it, you've kind of got a sacrificial lamb going in here. So this first batch of whites is really just to loosen up the chocolate and get it to a point where we can add the rest of the whites and they'll retain their air. So it's okay if you're a little bit rough here on this first batch of whites going in because you kind of have to be, but you can see already it's lightened up significantly. All right, so now in two additions, I'm going to just add the rest of the whites and you want to use big sweeping motions going all the way around the bowl, under and over. And this looks good to me. It said mix until there are virtually no streaks remaining. So you want to overfill these ramekins so that we can scrape it off and make a nice level top. So I'm doing two big spoonfuls here. Okay, so you can see that this is mounted up over the top. Now in a swift and deliberate motion, scrape this into the bowl here. And then I'm gonna pound that just a couple times. Overfilling the ramekins gives you the opportunity to ensure that you're gonna have a really flat top when these bake up. All right, and the final finishing touch here is just to sprinkle some granulated sugar over the top of these, and this will give us a little bit of crunch. The final insurance policy in this recipe to ensure your souffles rise is to rub your thumb around the inside to release it from the lip, but being careful not to remove the butter that's underneath. So we're going to pop these into the preheated oven for 12 to 15 minutes. I've got the oven preheated to 425 and we're going to drop the temperature down to 400 degrees for the bake time. Thanks to my new oven thermometer, I now know that my oven bakes 15 degrees too cool. So if you haven't invested in an oven thermometer, I honestly believe it's worth the investment. These have been in the oven for exactly 13 minutes and you can see they rose up nice and high. So all of these rose really well, even this one, which we didn't brush the sides up. Maybe it's not quite as tall as the others, but I would say the brushing vertically isn't really a deal breaker here. And so while this is still hot, I'm going to break the center open and I'm going to pour in some melted vanilla ice cream, just like Claire said to. Oh, I'm dying to try this. It looks so incredible. Super hot. Mmm. Oh my god. It's like as light as mousse. I've never had souffle even in a restaurant before, so this is entirely new for me. It's as light as a mousse, and it's so kind of um, like creamy and velvety. Mmm. And the texture from this bit that rose up is a little bit crispy because of that sugar. This is so good. So just looking at the center, it doesn't seem fully cooked, but when you scoop it out, it kind of wobbles around. So I'm not sure what the center should be. I really like the way that this center is. I don't know if that wobbly texture is exactly what you're looking for. 
So, I mean, the recipe here really isn't that difficult. The chocolate seasoning situation that I had was more of a chocolate selection issue than a recipe issue. That said, I'd much rather my chocolate seize on just a random Saturday than your chocolate seize if you're making this on Valentine's Day. So I would definitely recommend that you give this one a try, though. The flavor, texture, everything is just superb, and it's really impressive looking, so I like that. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give me a big thumbs up and click subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.